The dog looks up at you with misery-ridden eyes. Its tail doesn't wag, and when it tries to bark or speak, only silence reaches your ears. The dog hangs its head, then looks north. Filled with fury, it barks noiselessly in the direction of the forest. With frantic, jerky motions, Walgraf writes the following message. Sorcery silenced this poor dog's tongue. We must go north and find the bastard that did this. Perhaps he can undo it. Perhaps he knows a cure for himself, for me. An intense passion burns in Walgraf's eyes. To find the dread silencer, to make him reverse his incantations, it is but a dream. But what if there is truth in it? A deluge. I'd never have judged a few grimy ground dwellers and lost ones at that to be worth all this fuss. Chief knows what he knows. He says, find the cellar, so that's what we do. Well, for all he knows, they could be knee-deep in forest muck, miles away from here. The forest? So that settles it. You really are bigger buffoon as you look. No one gets into the Phantom Forest, brother. No one. And the conduit. Chief says she's there as we speak. That thick brain of yours is better suited for gruel than for thinking. Of course she's there. She's got the goddess within her. Come on, then. You've got to sell her to find. Your chattel won't scare it into the open. Fancy scribble pages. Never did trust them myself. The force of Maxos is within me. Careful, comrade. I think I sense a sorcerer in yonder shed. By the wings of Freyo Fuldon, I bet my left ear there ain't no cellar here. You there! Any cellars popping out the woodwork in your watch? Is this one of the fancy swivel things? I'm drenched! Slaves and rubbish. I ain't a bleeding maid. Hey, you already 
check beneath these boards. Ain't there something behind here? There's nothing to find in this bleeding dump. I feel like I've just had a long bath in a cold lake. Someone's here. Oh, don't stop it. Yeah, I guess dog is cut on us. Like a dip in the river now. You must be itching to lose your fingers if you dare disturb my camp, human. What are you playing at, Toadskin? Watch how you address us, you betters. You did hear how old Lord Gorag got his name after all. Yeah, piss off then. Go and gab amongst yourselves like a pair of chickens, why don't ya? I could ask the same of you, small bones. I don't go stopping up to you in the ballet class demanding to know which pirouette you're doing next, do I? I have got a hole in my pocket, have I? Ugh, oh, I'm dripping. Big ugly brute yes, making me do his dirty I'm work. Sick. I bet his skull would make a lovely goblet for Jarl's mead. Well, well, well. Thought you could get away with it, did ya? Don't look so confused, Pinky. The armory key. Bend it over. Painting my toenails pale lilac, of course. Or does it look like you ape? I'm hunting for a missing key. I'm the old mother's right hand. If there's something she needs done by someone she knows can do it, I'm the one she calls. This little key ordeal, don't change that. It's small, metal, fixing a key up. Help us look or shove off, will ya? I've got to find the key before the old mother finds out it's missing, or she'll carve a spare at me right task. Oh, it's missing. It could prove rather worth our time to find it. Source hunter, scavenger hunter. For better or worse, our resume is growing. Oh, Dunce probably lost the bloody thing. Up his up. One side. I ain't got time for chatting until I find the damn thing. What does that matter? Quit buzzing in my ear before I squash you like we did the rest of the pests in this blasted place. You'd be too if you'd misplaced something of Gratilda's. I once saw her skin her own foot soldier alive for mispronouncing All Mother. And he'd only done it after she'd knocked his teeth out for sneezing in her presence. What's worse is, the coward's blaming his troubles on me, only because I happened to be passing by when he noticed his armory key was missing. I'd tell him to piss off and be on my way, but he'd threaten to tell Gratilda it's me who stole it. Somehow, I doubt I'll get to tell my side of things before my head was shorn clear off. Not a damn thing in all the twelve hills of hell. This idiot orc has no idea where he's lost the damn thing. So he's taken to blaming me, a passerby. It's just like an orc to save his own skin by flaying someone else. I haven't got a hole in my pocket. A bloody key. Who could trust a big stupid oaf like you with something like that? Oh, you shank to me, you fool, hey? I say you're so stupid the key probably fell from your pocket while you were squatting over the latrine. Dunce probably lost the bloody thing up his own ass. I haven't got a hole in my pocket, have I? Yes, all mother, I'll say. The humans is the one. I feel like I've just had a yeah, long bath in a cold lake. Alone again, I'll 
Christ! Oh, I'm dripping. So, are you that? Have you keep that up? Hey, Sean, the big ugly brute making me do his dirty work. I bet his skull would make a lovely goblet for Jarl's mead. You better hope the bleeding key shows up soon. Thought you said he would. Dorkish custom to take a dip in the river. I've got a hole in my pocket. Sunk to the skin. Many rats scurry in and out of this hole, where it leads is uncertain. What about that one? Look how it skulks around. Neither orc nor enlightened. I'll bet no one would even notice if it disappeared. Yeah, no, I'll hear another word about it. Only the guilt come to these gallows. Where's the innocent in these trying times, brother? I'll take the blood, and you take the body. A fair deal, isn't it? I'm not a lovely sight up there, all in a row. Trying about myself, I did. Eight of the little darlings, a sweeter sight I could not ask for. I never did much care for the turn myself. I'm more of a caretaker, you see. The world's a wild place, unpredictable at best. But here, upon these gallows, there's peace, calm. I keep the order, and my little ones stay in line. Condemned in this life, perhaps. But when they come to rest in my music, their sins are washed away. These old thieves and murderers and traitors, you see, after I've laid them to rest here, yeah, they're pure as angels. My little angels. Most of them, yes. But that's far from my only order of business. Our great Queen Gretilda is no stranger at getting her claw bloody. And she'll not hesitate to pluck out a pair of eyes or look at her sideways. I handle all the dreaming dears when she's done with them all the same. Whether they're my little ones or hers makes no difference. I'm happy to bring them here to rest among me and mine. It should be an honor. Where ought we to start? Pauline came first, the little rogue, a human he was, and Gatilda ordered him hanged while Yarl was out on the hunt. He was the first I got to tack in myself since coming to this town. Oh, I remember it like it was yesterday. The fussy little dear didn't want to go to sleep. No, no. Ticked and screamed. But he started to calm down a bit after I strung him up as I knew he would. And soon he was fast asleep. Oh, my little dear, though. He was a sweet one right from the start. A thief, I think he was in his last life, but he accepted what was to come easy as pie. The guards handed him to me, limp as a doll and shivering with fright. I strung him up nice and slow, so as not to worry the poor dear. The nerve, you mean? 
He was one of the Tildes. After some impertinent question or other, I believe it was. Impertinent questions. A plague among we orcs they are. And in more deaths than horn rot these days. Well, Gatulga dispatched him. But it was I who collected the great heavy gear and strung him up here. Gatulga said he'd be a wound to the others. But I think he's a great addition to the family to boot. He died like a lovely sort of pale green colour, don't he? Like a dusty ancient giant. It doesn't take much to send oh, Gotilda over the edge, does it? Again, Who the lost one of the greatest threat to the Immaculate Tree, one of their own. Baking like a cake. You, uh, you there, tell me, how's your vision? Any ailments in the liver or spleen? Lost ones are everywhere these days, after all. I am a servant to the goddess, of course. One of the first among her enlightened in Revelon, and certainly the most devoted. I've scoured the region for unworthy souls, and am quite efficiently cleansing the land of lost ones great and small. How much better the lost serve her as bone automatons. My expertise as a necromancer is unmatched, you know. I've a success rate is nearing 99%. They end up with their brains a bit, well, scrambled. You can find such a fellow opining over skulls somewhere around here. One of my more harmless false steps, I think. I could do with a cold drink. Even the old man in the market for some premium gear, are ya? Anything and everything left behind by vermin after the exterminate. And I must say, some of these roaches are mighty fine taste. The old mother chooses first for my spoils, and the rest she grants to us to use or turn to profit. Three of Gutilda doesn't tell you a thing, does she? We're waiting to fight the final battle. The time is nearly nigh. Well, well, well. What, what, what do we have here? Human reinforcements. No need for a supple young kitten like yourself here. My rats will find the villagers in no time at all. Do you pretend not to know me, child? Surely you stare into my left eye each time you admire the full moon. But play coy, if you will. The old mother called me here to find a certain tiny herd of sheep missing from her flock. Ah, the wolfish shepherd woman, she. I am world-renowned for my ability to search and to find. Why, well, you might ask, feigning ignorance so that you might hear more of my lilting voice. Rats, kitten. Rats are always the answer. There's no hole they won't find, no stench that can deter them. No, there is no hiding from a rat, and so there is no hiding. I am their king, and my subjects will find those hidden villages in no time at all! Lost names, yes, flee the slaughter, naughty, naughty! I'll give them quite the spanking when my rats whisper to me where to find them. Yes, ah, perhaps I'll get my fill of my own private punishments first and foremost. The old mother believes those villagers, being the one-time servants of the wizard, will know how to find him. Or at least how to break the enchantments shielding his house. Wicked enchantments, are they? Her mother, yes. 
And we do suckle from the teat of her goodwill. No wonder so many of us starve. <laughs> an iron feast in an iron glove is our Clotilda. She doesn't tolerate failure any more than I tolerate a spring nymph stealing glimpses of me during bath time. No, no, Shira, I say. You get your fill at the God's Day Festival. <laughs> What? Do I look like his secretary? And even if I wear with my head in a tight little bun and my quail at the ready, the old mother doesn't share her every concern with me, you know. Oh, those she whispers to her pillow at eventide, when only the feathers can hear her. Perfectly disciplined, aren't they? They obey my every command, and when I die, they'll all leap into my grave so that they needn't be without me. Don't try to stop them, no. They won't have it any other way. What are you calling? Let the lost oh, die that we live. Wargrave spotted something. To hell I've fallen in. Come on, let's see it all come. Need a week. I don't want to drag my own best day. Why, Lord? I wouldn't dare steal from the old mother. A grave crime, that'd be. No, no. I simply peek from the door. She hasn't quite noticed yet. Doesn't miss him in the least. This I promise on my honour as an old. This orc's been withholding loot from his so-called all-mother. Interesting indeed. A bit of information well kept in our back pockets. I'm going to call it. Now for the quarter. Now for the clock. It's heating up. Three of them. Wargrave spotted something. It never rains, but it pours, eh? Take some and let's shut your mouth and go get some wine, Now there's an idea with a ring to it.
I've got my eyes on the prize. Cheers. Though I wish they were a bomb to go off around the end. I told them. Damn scullery maid. Charla and Horton. Aren't those the skeleton traders we met? Charla in Sicile and Horton just outside this village. If this is to be believed, their spirits are trapped in a dark priestess's totem. Clean up, clean out. What am I? A goddamn scullery maid. Spotted something. Many rats scurry in and out of this hole. Where it leads is uncertain. Boot soles of Burl Boonhammer, what have we here? Another human in Hunter's Edge. <laughs> State your business, whelp. Pale Immaculate. By the sickle of tear gut gouger, I'm glad to see another human face here in Hunter's Edge. Not yet another misshapen orcish snout. If you fancy keeping that human face of yours, I wouldn't take my cues from the Chief of the Mountain Apes. I may have sworn to refrain from carving my name across his back, but yours, I do believe, is free for the taking. Regular ray of sunshine, ain't she? <laughs> Don't let her manners fool you, though. Her disposition may be dark, but her wit is bright. Bright and devious. 
Believe me when I tell you that she's plotting against us as we speak, and would have long given the order to spill our blood if she wasn't leashed by the orders of the conduit herself. But by the shield of the Stormbringer, she'll not outfox the sworn brothers of Tanaroth. And I sincerely hope she won't outfox the likes of you either. You belong to the Silver Glen tribe, I take it. Thought you were all holed up in high behind. But it pleases me to see some of your number have come to Hunter's Edge. Yes, an outsider not as yet distrusted by the Orcs is exactly what I need in the matter of the missing bloodstones and the matter of the wizard's house. So let's talk in my headquarters over yonder. For by the beard of the bear slayer, there are too many green ears around here. Never sully, and your shield never shatter. The bloodstones are the reason we came here in the first place. The conduit has need of star stones imbued with human blood so she can create her death knights. Both the Brotherhood and the Orcs were given their share of stones, and we filled them to the brim with blood, then stored them for the conduit to collect when she returns from Phantom Forest. Last night, though, Someone raided this very building and disappeared with our stones. They were being guarded by Garrick Giantbane, a son of the mountain I'd entrust with my life. Grutilda says he ran off with the bloodstones, that he is a betrayer to the cause of Immaculates. But I know this to be untrue. The Orcs stole the stones. Of that, I'm certain. Grutilda is hatching some plan and will all be in dire straits indeed if it comes to fruition. Those stones make her powerful. Too powerful. We need them back. But every orc eyes us peak dwellers with suspicion. That is why I ask of you to find proof. Proof that it was an orc that did the deed. Once I have it, I have a reason to assault the orcs without risking the wrath of the conduit. She'll not stand for theft among immaculates. So find me that proof, and we'll slaughter the orcs together. I am Jarl Woodoxen, father among brothers, son among the mountains. Me and mine hail from the snow-capped heights of Tanaroth, the very thrones of the world. Our lives are devoted to the hunt. Every town and every city we find we plunder and burn and put to the sword. Sacrifices are they all to the might of the mountains, tokens of reverence to the power of the peaks. Gods, we have plenty of war, of death, and of victory. But now, a goddess we have too. Aye, we have seen the workings of Bloodstone, and loyal are we to she who unites in blood. By the teeth of Kiel Wolfjaw, as immaculate shall we rule the world. The conduit asked us to do what we do best invade and destroy. She set us on our way with a store of star stones, ready to be charged and, once made into bloodstones, sent to you folks in the mines of Luke Culler. We didn't know Grutilda's dogs had beat us there by a half day, but no matter. There were still plenty of strays to be caught and bled by the time we arrived. Now all that's left is finding a way into the wizard's house. The conduit's looking for something inside. Now we're here waiting for further orders from the conduit herself. She's gone into the Phantom Forest nearby, but we expect to hear from her shortly. I only hope we'll have the matter of the missing bloodstones sorted by then. I'll not have a soul saying we're the mountain failed to follow through. By the goddess! No, oh, I respect their warlike nature, for it's like ours. I respect their lust for slaughter, for we share it with them. I respect their loyalty to their leader, for I am likewise respected by my brothers. But when push comes to shove, 
I'd flay them all, wear their skins, and never rest until the very last one of them lay at my feet with my broad axe nestling in its belly. Why, you may ask, why hate them when you and them are so alike? I hate them because we are alike. I hate them because I know ours is a hate they reciprocate with blazing fury. Like two dragons are we that must share a single lair. Can't be done. Sooner or later, talons will rise and fire burst forth until one is victorious and the other's flesh is used to celebrate the victory. So it is with the Sworn of Tananoth, and so it is with the Orcs of the Wild. One day the battle must be. One day we will feast or be feasted upon. Gratilda is worshipped like a goddess by her troops, and she rules like a deity too. All-knowing, all-powerful and merciless. She's smart and ruthless. Truly an opponent to be feared. Exactly the kind of opponent I like. The Conduit was wise to go to the Orcs with promises of allegiance. For they are a force that few in Rivalon can withstand. But she also knows that the pack cannot last. She's well aware the Orcs will eventually go their own way. Be they sworn immaculates or not. She needn't fear them, of course. The Conduit is constructing an army of warriors even the Orcs behold with dread. But it is we brothers of the mountains that may have to bear the brunt of their onslaught when things go sour. Gratilda knows the pack was never meant to last. She understands she's being used as a battering ram, as a tool to breach the gates and clear the path to triumph, only to be discarded by its operators when the true prize is in sight. She knows, and she's plotting her revenge. I can see it in those feral eyes of hers. She's surrounded by her elite. She whispers poisonous orders in the ears of her vile rat herder. No, it's no coincidence all her bloodstones have gone missing. By the hammer of Fjord Alkmount, I just know she's planning a nightmare for her dreams and our terrors to suffer. And with the Spinebreaker at her side, it's a terrible nightmare she's concocting. Aye, an orc so vile it has taken rats for pets. They swarm about him like fleas do the rest of his kind, but even they eye him with disgust. Nevertheless, it's my belief that unlike the other males among the orcs, he's no fool. He's a spy, a discoverer of secrets. Right now he's looking for the lost wizard servants and gods protect them if he finds them. We would merely kill them. That rat lover on the other hand. Where we go, death is the horror that looms behind us. Where he goes, death is a mercy always out of reach. Gratilda's hulking horrible dog. Built like a brick house and with a mind as black as pitch. There's no indignity he wouldn't inflict on any man, woman, or child his mistress marked. Gratilda stores him above the tavern and sends him playthings one at a time. A sentence worse than death. Let's shut your mouth and go get I some I don't wine. know much about him, to be frank, and I don't care to. The conduit says he's in possession of an artifact she needs, which is why we've been trying to gain entry to his house. But by the boots of our like Troll Tramper, the key hasn't been forged yet that will unfasten the magical seals that encase that bedeviled sorcerer's abode. The deal is this. When we attacked Hunter's Edge, we and the Orcs had the village completely surrounded to ensure no one could escape. The plan was a good one, for only some blacksmith and his wife managed to flee after their little demon of a pet bit an Orc's arm off. <laughs> The wizard and his servants eluded us, but we know that the servants at least are still hiding somewhere around town. We need to find those damn people so they can tell us how to gain entry to the wizard's house. My men have been searching the village non-stop, and the orcs have put their rat herder on the job. But we also have some surviving villagers holed up down in the cellar. An orc torturer, courtesy of Glutilda, has been trying to find out where the servants had hiding but has no finesse whatsoever, and almost instantly kills his victims. We've offered to do it for him, but Gratilda remains adamant he's the best of the best. Maybe you'd have better luck, though. 
If you're up for a spot of torture. This wizard must be Xandalon. Thankfully, these bloodthirsty brutes have found him. Let's hope we catch up with him before they do. Clean up, clean out. What am I? A goddamn scullery maid. Great grim gods, comrade. The span breaker. Norak, he's called. He's... He's the bleeding brute. The green-faced gargoyle who... Who? I must face him. Face him and destroy him before he can claim another victim. Go. You hear? Clean up, Loud clean up. Loud and bloody oh, well clear, sir. A goddamn scullery maid. Let's get the ball rolling here. Five coins. I'll call and raise you another five. Why, comrade, I... Well, I can't tell you how much I... <clears throat> With you... By my side, I'll face the monster head on and make him pay for what he's done. It will be an honor. In the name of the order. This is I told you it was I need a drink of it. That one's worth hey. ten coins. Hey, sure. it all to hell, to hell I fall. You know that. Yeah, yeah, but our orders don't your man me. Then go find yourself a sheep if you're so bloody up and on this window. Yarl seems to trust you. He says you could enter here anyway. Here's the key. Garrick's innocent as Claire or Claiborne. And every brother of the mountain knows it. Feeding him his own letters. serve them whiskey anyway. in their beds. At least they didn't suffer. The villagers left to the Orc Queen oh, suffered far choice. worse fates. Just fine, sir man. And you? Sit, sit, sit. 
Jackson. Hey, new toys, new toys. <laughs> but where's Mum? Something's wrong. This is the monster who killed all those villages. This, this child. He want me to, but this can't be right. The orc I remember, he was, he was evil, a sadistic monster. This is, oh my head is spinning faster than a broken bumblebee. Let me, let me get a good look at him. Hello, I remember you. We used to be friends, didn't we? Yeah, we were great friends. We played all the live long night and I made pretty red ribbons up and down and down and up your face. Where'd your ribbons go? Do you want I should give you some more? This isn't right. I'm gonna be sick. It's all right, Medora. We're here together. No harm will come to you. Sorry, pretty toy. Oh, please, please don't shout. Oh, Mum will be awfully cross if I make a ruckus. Mum! Oh, the best mum in the whole wide world. Usually, orcs like me, well, scramble-headed, me brothers call me, are killed right away. But Mum says she took one look at me and knew I'd be the best warrior in the world. She brings me lots of toys and friends, and she showed me all the best games to play. At first, I, I didn't like how the toys would holler and cry when I'd make ribbons on them or play eyeball pop. But Mum taught me that that's how they show they're happy. First, they scream for joy, and then they take a long, long, Grutilda. Yeah, that's my mum's name. <gasps> Did you meet her? Did, did she want us to play together? Comrades, my mind's racing and my heart's gone like a snare drum. To be here, face to face with my greatest enemy and to find that he's, he's not at all like the villain I'd worked up in my mind. It's, it's unimaginable. Hated him with every drop of blood in these veins. Hated him till my entire being screamed for revenge. But now I find he's as simple as a child. Maybe he even thought all the cruelty, the death he inflicted was a game. And all around us, more victims and years stretching behind us, and years stretching ahead of us. More dead bodies tortured and wrung by his hands. But you, comrade, time and again you show me the valor inherent of forgiveness. You face the impossibly cruel or weak, and you offer them a second chance. Still, I, I cannot forgive this monster. He may well be confused, and he may have been mistaught, but that won't stop him from killing again. Ho, oh, comrade, in the name of the Order of the Sauce Hunters, I ask you to lay down forgiveness and to join me now. To arms! Uh, uh, are you mad at me? Oh, I'm sorry. Whatever it was, I I'm not doing it again. I, I promise.
Careful, comrade. I think I sense a sorcerer in yonder shadows. Well, comrade, I'm a source hunter, born, bred, and trained. And that there was a soul bent on committing evil deeds. I know full well he wasn't 100% accountable for his crimes, but I couldn't have stood to leave him living knowing there'd be a next victim. I'm no fool, comrade. I know it wasn't an easy case, not nearly so easy as I dreamed it to be. But I believe we've done right here today. Careful, comrade. I think I sense a sorcerer in yonder shadows. But what'll you do if a pack of wild necromantic... Degenerates here claim they have been cleansed. 
but I can still smell the stink of persisting putrescence wafting from their grimy flesh. Silver Glen, this place sickens me. I can tell you if you wish, but you'd have to listen to the tale of my life, because my future, such as it is, is rooted deeply into my history. Only fools believe. Wise creatures know. Yes, I shall rejoin you, for you've much to learn yet. What can I do for you, Source Hunter? By all means, if you're in the mood for such a dark tale. Once upon a time, I was a king in a land of beauty to the east. A land of tigers and slender towers, of deserts and forests, of sun and all the world's wealth. I was a young king, handsome and all-powerful. Every nobleman would have killed his own brother if I promised to take his daughter's hand in marriage. But I refused their incessant implorations. I knew my life as a sovereign would be self-indulgent, but also a self-delusory one, if I weren't to marry for love. And so a handful of years went by. The king's throne I myself occupied whereas the Queen's throne remained empty but for the court's cats that would nap the afternoons away upon its velvet cushions. But then one day, a young woman visited my kingdom. She was a poetess and a storyteller. People flocked to her, listened to her every word as if receiving mantras from the divines. I invited her to my palace, and soon our days, our nights, our love and our lives intertwined. Hiraka. How I miss her still. Miss the brilliance of her mind that was both as sparkling and as unbreakable as the diamonds that adorned her body. Oh, and how I miss her body. A thousand artists I could have commanded show me beauty but she would have effortlessly surpassed their every endeavor and curving her lips into a smile make them break their sculptures in tearful impotence. And yet, true happiness, that commodity more precious and even more fleeting than the dominion of kings, sang to us like the nightingale, only to depart come the dawn of our first year's unity. A malady overtook me and I began to wither. It was an unparalleled horror. Scores of physicians flocked to my bedside. They traveled from realms across the seas hoping to cure the mighty Jehan, undo the gloom that had befallen the land, and mere vultures that they were, to be paid handsomely for their efforts. But none of their potions took effect. Their salves seared but did not soothe my fading flesh. Like a ghoul I looked, unburied yet risen from the grave. In futile anger I struck my mirror, but broke my brittle fingers only, not its ever mocking surface. It went like this, Hunter. If a ghoul I had become, so a dark turn of thought convinced me, a ghoul's methods I should employ to escape the labyrinthian crypt of corporeal corruption. A necromancer I'd be. Yes, only from deep within the deliriums of death would I tunnel my way back into the gardens of life. I did unspeakable things in the dusky dungeons that twist like forgotten veins to long-deceased organs far beneath my castle's sunlit halls. Halls which held my throne and held the bed upon which Heraka slept, her very touch blessing the satin she reposed upon. Still there came no relief. 
perversions I created in scores, but they were mere undead all. Creatures so piteous that the thought of cheating death in their guise frightened me more than the swing of the scythe itself. Like mosquitoes in the night, panic and despair beset me until I turned to that darkest of all arts, demonology. It had to be. There was no other way. I could feel the life slipping out of me like love out of a betrayed spouse's heart. So I studied tomes so old the dust that fell from their centuries' unperused pages never knew the light of the stars that now shine. I drew forbidden symbols. I spoke unhallowed words. And from the smoke that rose like a dragon's last breath, a demon appeared to me and said, Ask, O blighted king, and you shall have. Just tell me, I cried. Tell me what ails me. Hiraka. Never had I known a single word can cut deeper than the sharpest of daggers. With maddening glee, the demon told me she was one of his kin. A soul-swallowing horror that had been feeding on both my body and my spirit like a leech. An ancient being was she, that moved from king to king throughout the ages, filling their hearts with love, then draining them of life. After such revelations, does one truly desire to live on? Death seemed like a mother then, welcoming me with her all-will-be-well embrace. Yet still I feared exceedingly her seemingly sweet caress, and the oblivion that would follow. Release me from her demon, and give me back the strength of a sick, free existence. So went my desperate plea. It smiled, of course it did. Smiled bare a hundred razors as its eyes came alight with infernal fire. A thousand years I will give you, it whispered. But then your soul shall be mine to incarcerate in the depths of hellish nemesis. As for your throne, that I'll have now. What say you, O oh brittle king? Do you accept my terms? I think you know the answer to that question, Hunter. But I've said enough for now. These memories are painful to recollect. So let us turn to the rest of them later. So I shall. Prey awaits.